how can I start getting my applications or parts of my applications online in a familiar way if I'm an access developer and I really know the event-driven model and that's what I'm comfortable with. I'm your host, Sean McKenzie, and today's episode starts a new playlist on web forms, which is an awesome technology. It's been around for quite a while and it's part of Microsoft's .NET uh, platform and it's a really comfortable way of developing uh, online applications for people that like the, the old you know, VB way of developing applications with event-driven model and, and models and things like that. And so uh, what we're gonna do today is we're gonna walk through right from the very beginning. Let's get to it. Wanna hang out in Discord? Make sure to check out my Patreon. VIP subscription gets you in there. Okay guys, so today's goal is to create and deploy a web forms application that connects to a database. That's it, that's where we wanna to get to today. And so first what we're gonna do is, uh, you can download it, just type in download Visual Studio into Google. I highly recommend that you guys get Visual Studio uh, 2022 Professional. Um, if you click on the download, you can find um, either visualstudio.microsoft.com and then click download or you can go directly to a link from here um, and uh, it'll take you here and you can you can use the community edition for free if you're not uh, commercial or if you're just a very small commercial operation um, I would recommend you guys go for this professional uh, version here because it does have some neat little um, uh, it has more features, but also um, it allows you to deploy for many, many different kinds of environments. So go ahead, download, install it. You can use the default parameters that are there. If you see options for Visual Basic, make sure that you uh, tick those off. Uh, you may or may not see those. Um, and then when you start it, you'll see a screen that looks kind of like this one, that where you can clone or open a project or open a local folder or you can con continue without code on the very bottom there. And uh, what we're gonna do today is we're gonna create a new project. And once the uh, screen changes, you'll see that there are some selections if you worked in here before. So you can see I've been working with a console app and an ASP.NET application. And you'll see here that you can choose all kinds of languages. You could choose C Sharp, for example, which we are not gonna use today or Maybe you wanted to choose Python. Oh, there's nothing in there for that one. I think you have to install that. Uh, you could use TypeScript or whatever. And today, what we're gonna use is we're gonna use Visual Basic. And that XAML one is also cool, but we'll cover that in a future uh, episode. And then once we've got our Visual Basic selected, you'll see there's a whole bunch of different kinds of programs that you can make and, and different platforms and things like that. And you can see here, uh, you know, you can do, you know, console, desktop applications, you can do whatever, you know, you would like to do. Um, and what we're going to do is we'll filter that down by web, and that really narrows it down for us. And then we can see, hey, check this out. We've got an ASP.NET web application, and that's a project template for creating ASP.NET. And, uh, you know, it can use, it will use forms, uh, uh, MVC or web API. Um, and we are gonna choose that one and click next and then we'll give it a name um, and uh, the name uh, I think what we're gonna do today is I want to do a very simple uh, say tow truck application that just connects to a list of tow uh, you know a list of tow jobs in some da database somewhere and so we're gonna do that today um, and then what we'll do is we'll connect and display a list and that's it in our application. And then we'll, uh, we will um, continue on in future episodes. Now make sure you check that 4.7.2 uh, for your .NET framework there. You can see the tow operations uh, name is set after you've typed in the project name. So you can basically just click next there. Now, uh, in here is where you can choose different kinds of uh, ASP.NET applications. And, and the one that we're gonna use is called Web Forms. 
and uh, web forms is really cool because it lets you build dynamic websites using the familiar drag and drop event driven model so you can drag and drop controls onto your forms just like you see in other products um, where there's a bit of uh, sort of rad development um, and uh, over here you can see if we choose that one it, it it adds all the folders and everything we need for web forms we're going to configure it for HTTPS and we're going to create that note the authentication at the top you can also um, set your authentication here but we're going to do that a little bit further down the road and then you can uh, click next <clears throat> and it will uh, it will go through it oh click create I guess is is the button name there and you'll see it'll spin around for for a little bit and then it'll give you this sort of blank uh, project here and there's lots to look at here okay and to get started you can see uh, there is some extra information on this starting screen um, and uh, you can see there's uh, you know build your app so they have some information some guides on how you can uh, write your application and uh, you could take a look at some of those if you'd like to um, as far as uh, our application goes though um, the information for that is all over here and these are all the things that we're going to work with as we build an application now this comes kind of stocked and you if you lose your way and you need to find you can go to the view menu and you can choose that uh, prod or solution explorer and it will bring all of these forms back so each of those ASPX files is a form and this is how it looks in in uh, HTML or the HTML like markup that we have in uh, Visual Studio um, and .NET and you can see that this is a form and uh, it starts um, it kind of the content starts and ends and you can see that this is a what we call a content page and so a content page is kind of like uh, a form if you come from the access world Microsoft Access each one of these would be a form in your database or if you come from somewhere else these would be uh, separate pages uh, but they are actually rendered inside of a master page which is called site.master um, and so the site.master has the menus and things in it and then you create a new content page for each of the new say forms or or web pages that you would like to have in your uh, web forms application and so to navigate around um, you can you can uh, look at all those different things and if you click on the default dot ASPX um, that's the the one that gets uh, executed first and so you can run the application by clicking that play button up in the toolbar and it'll run it locally on your computer you can open it and close it a hundred times as you work on it and change forms and things like that and it'll start a browser each time um, in order to uh, look at and use the web application that you are designing and so this is what it looks like uh, when it comes out of the box and so you can see it's got a home about contact page it's got an application name and you can change all of those things in that code page that you saw and so each of these buttons you can see they have they have hover overs and that's using a technology called bootstrap um, to uh, to do that but also to make it responsive see if I close it uh, if I make the web browser smaller it changes the aspect of the menu and and it's really really great uh, for that you can see as I expand it out um, you can see the the uh, little boxes holding the information they either get stacked vertically or they get uh, you know displayed horizontally and so that's something that's really great to work with um, because you can put your lists and all kinds of things in there and then if somebody opens it on a phone or something smaller like a tablet then they they will still get a nice display um, and so uh, that's one of the things that I will point out there um, and uh, you can see down below here when I close the browser you can see that the code exited so that means that the the application stopped now as a shortcut you can press the F5 key on your keyboard and it will also start the application so you can see I've stopped and started it several times 
Um, these buttons right now, they, they link back to some Microsoft content. <clears throat> and so we'll take those over and we can change all of the text that is in uh, the application. So you can see here, that's a header, that's heading one. And then inside the, the P's there, uh, P like Papa, that's the, uh, those are paragraphs. Um, and so I could change the name of our application to tow operations, and then I could put a description, welcome to our, you know, our tow application or whatever. And, um, and so uh, we can do that. And we can also put links, you could change the link of that button uh, below it that goes to ASP.NET, you could change that and point it to some tow information. What if your car gets towed or whatever? I don't know. <laughs> you know, or you could just delete that button entirely and, and you would delete that. Um, <clears throat> and so you, there's a little bit of HTML knowledge that you need to know, but everything is inside tags. And you can also do this in the uh, designer. So if you click on the design button, in, down at the bottom there, there's a tab called Design, and you can see this in a more drag and drop way, uh, if you like that better. Um, and so I changed the te the the title, and I reran it, and you can see now it says Tow Operations. Welcome to the Tow Operations application. And of course, these buttons don't work yet. Um, and you could change all of these descriptions here, or get rid of these these bottom sections. Uh, but you can see this is exactly what we wanted and now we've got an application but it's still running on our local computer it's running on our computer and keep that in mind as you work on it because we have not deployed it yet and we will go ahead and deploy that um, here pretty soon and of course once you have your application and you start making changes to it you will want to have a database and so we're going to make a very simple database here. So we went into Azure, uh, we clicked on Azure SQL uh, type there, and then we clicked New for New Database. And uh, we're going to go through the steps here, and, uh, and we're just going to get started. So you can see that our resource group is empty except for the default one, but we want to make a resource group to hold everything about our tow application or our tow operations application and so we'll, uh, we'll call it rg uh, tow operations and that resource group that handles everything da databases applications if you have um, different kinds of uh, objects that are used and, and logic apps and things they would all go together in this one place and and then that allows us to, um, now we can specify a database name. I'll just call it tow-operations. Um, and then uh, we do need to create a server as well, uh, which I'll give the same name. You don't have to. Um, I will call this one uh, tow-operations. And then we'll see if that name is still available in database.windows.net. And you can see that it is, and I'll leave it in the default location there. Um, and so we'll have a tow operations database inside a tow operations uh, server. And then um, we could use both uh, SQL and Azure authentication. Uh, but I think for this, uh, for this application, I'm going to go ahead and just use SQL authentication. So that means just a username and password that's stored in the SQL server. Um, and uh, it's one of the three ways that you can deploy your system. Um, and so I'm gonna give a server uh, name or a server administrator name of tow admin. And then I have to put in a password here. And so we'll put in a password and make sure that those match and then uh, we can click OK. And that will be the start of our um, new database. Um, you can see it's got, wow, it's got some cost to it. So, you know, they give you a pretty, uh, pretty good server here if you're really going to have some throughput. Um, on your database. As we scroll down here, you can see 
uh, we've got our server created and we're gonna switch that one uh, to development um, that's gonna reduce the size of our database considerably um, now you can put yours into production and choose a smaller a much smaller um, uh, database size um, this one has gone from you know four hundred dollars to six dollars per month because uh, a development server is not expected to have a whole bunch of uh, you know people working on it and things like that you know users working on it I should say and so here we go we've got our uh, our setup um, there you can choose your backup storage redundancy um, and uh, depends on what you would like for your database um, I usually just choose the local one unless I have something that needs really needs fault tolerance um, and uh, we can choose our connectivity at this point. And I'm going to choose a public endpoint because uh, I want to have an IP address that I can connect to with my SQL Server Management Studio to create my database. And so I'm going to choose a public endpoint. Now we are going to allow Azure services because we want an app service to connect to this database inside of our uh, tow resource group and we will also add our current client IP address this is more for you guys um, I have a bit of a weird network situation here so um, I'm gonna do it a little differently but you guys uh, should put your own uh, IP address in there so that you can connect to the database directly from your computer and start making changes to it um, so we can go ahead and uh, go through all of the different options here. Most of these will be uh, defaults. Um, we don't have any data, you know, uh, database collation. Just leave it as default unless you have a different collation you'd like to use. And then on at the end here on the tags, you could type in, you know, something to do with your operation. Uh, if you want, if you had a lot of databases and you wanted to. Uh, tag all of the, diff the different items and, and then be able to view them together. You can do that using tags. Um, and so I put a tag in there on that one. And so now you can see uh, we've got our, our database information all in there. I'm going to click create and then this is going to sit and churn for a little while while it builds that server for us and then it puts the, uh, the little database on it. Now Keep in mind, if you make additional databases related to the same thing, don't make a new server each time because you can add a whole bunch of databases to one server. And that is much more efficient uh, depending on what you're doing. So you'll see it kind of goes through the options here and, uh, and it's deploying our SQL, uh, Azure SQL database. And so as this is uh, deploying, I will encourage you to also download SQL Server Management Studio. It is free and uh, you can just type in download SSMS into Google and find the Microsoft page that has it and uh, you'll get the latest one. And then uh, what that does is it it's kind of like a, it's like a little development studio just for um, working with databases and creating databases and filling them with data or or you know doing backups and all those kinds of things everything to do with databases happens inside of uh, SQL Server Management Studio and so you can connect to local databases on your network or you can connect to Azure databases in the cloud and that's what we're gonna do uh, we're going to use SSMS to connect to this new database that we're, we're, we are creating and uh, it allows us to do things like create tables and all that kind of stuff. So this looks like it is almost done. It's going through here. Now a nice way of developing is to have your own copy of SQL Express on your computer um, so that you can do all kinds of design work and if there's a lot of data that gets moved around you can do a lot of that stuff locally and then just take your scripts that you you created locally your SQL scripts and then execute them in your cloud environment um, when they're all done so that you save on bandwidth and and storage and all that stuff in Azure and so 
Stay tuned for a future episode on doing a local installation of SQL Express just for your development. Okay, so there we go. Our deployment succeeded. Uh, so you can see it says, you know, <clears throat> your deployment is complete and, uh, and, you know, gives you some information. And we can just click that go to resource and it'll take us right to our new database that has been created uh, there. And you can see that it has a name at the top there, the Dash operations. And if I click on the connection strings, you can see this uh, ADO.NET connection string is here. It's the first one. And that's for our Microsoft environment. And that is the string that we're going to use that will tell our data client, the ADO.NET um, SQL client, it'll tell it uh, where to look for our data. So what we're going to do is we're going to copy that and I'll paste that into Notepad. Um, make sure you do the same so that you have it. Um, and that's going to be very handy for the next step of our of our development here where we are actually going to connect to our database um, and uh, we'll use that string in the application um, and so we want to have that uh, ready to go. So there's our server name. We can click on that server name um, and it'll take us to the server which can hold many databases and you can see there's a whole bunch of options down the left hand side here and if we click on networking um, just in case you guys have other places that you do work or if you're working at home um, and your IP changes you'll need to put in a new firewall rule to get into that server so say it changed um, and I'm gonna put my own uh, web address in here as a as a rule so say your your <clears throat> you know your IP address for your home internet changed because you know the power went on and off and you don't have a static IP or something like that um, you can create a new rule um, with the new IP address and that will allow that single IP address to connect to your data server and so everybody else on the internet is blocked except for you know your few addresses that you have and that makes it much much more secure um, since basically nobody else can see that database um, and so now what you can do is you can start your SQL Server Management Studio like I did here and you can type in the name of your of your server and in, in this case it's to-operations.database.windows.net yours will be whatever you decide it to be and then you, you'll choose that SQL Server authentication um, uh, or Azure you know if you're using Azure uh, Active Directory you can use that too but in this case, I'm just going to put in that password, uh, that username and password, and that's going to open the database in SQL Server Management Studio, um, as you can see here. And at the top left there, that's our Object Explorer, and you can see that the server has a little blue has a little blue database, you know, uh, icon beside it, and that means that that server is in Azure. And so I can open up our, our database here. It doesn't have any tables in it. Um, and so we're going to just stuff uh, some very crude data into a table here um, just to give you an idea of what it looks like to create a table and then put some data in. Or you might have, in your case, uh, maybe you already have a uh, database that is in Azure and you want your application to connect to it in that case you can probably skip this step um, but we'll go ahead and create a table and then put a little bit of data into it so as you can see I clicked on the new query button in the toolbar and that gave me a, a new um, worksheet and in the worksheet I'm going to type in a DDL statement, which is uh, for creating ta creating tables and things like that. And uh, so you can see that in the left hand, this is very important, in the left hand uh, navigation menu where we have toe-operation, you can see that it is selected. So at the time that your new worksheet gets created, it looks in that it looks there for where you want this to work because you can have 
five or ten or a hundred you know databases in that list there and if you click the new query um, when you're selecting a different database it will make it and get it ready to execute on that other database so make sure you always have the right one selected in the left hand uh, left hand side there the object explorer uh, before you start um, you know creating uh, creating your script um, that's just something to watch out for and so here I'm going to create a simple table I'm making an auto number at the top for those of you who are access developers uh, toe ID uh, that structure with an integer not null identity means auto number and then primary key clustered basically means that it's the integers stored in ascending order and it is all stored together and you can see I'm adding some <laughs> some uh, simple fields here just you know called in by driver vehicle tow address we don't I don't want to get too uh, crazy on this table here because the the purpose of this is just to show how to connect to it and today what we're going to do is we are going to put our own data in here in a moment and then we are going to make our application when we deploy it it's going to use a connection to this uh, database look at this table and then provide a list a very simple list at the end of our web page that you saw earlier uh, when we you know pressed f5 to start the application and there we go we've got our table um, I'll actually put a max in here so that a max gives a huge amount of, of characters that you can have in there and uh, oh, that there's my syntax okay so there you can see um, I've created a table script but I have not executed it yet so it has not created the table just yet and not until we actually execute it but I'm gonna add a few more statements to insert data into our table after the table is created and so uh, we'll do an insert statement for that this is very similar to your append query if you're coming from the access world uh, so now what we're going to do is we're just going to uh, insert into our new table um, some values um, now you can do this step that you see here uh, you can actually do it um, manually like you do in an access environment um, you can right click on that database there uh, and in the uh, navigation menu in the left and you can go new table uh, or right click on tables I'll check that in a minute here but um, you can basically right click go new table and you can do it visually like you do in Microsoft Access and you can also insert data manually if you right click on the table once it is created uh, you can right click on the table and go edit top 200 rows and then you can punch in uh, into the data sheet I'm just doing it um, this way today so you can all see exactly how um, this works uh, when once you really start working with this kind of data um, so you can create an insert statement we'll have uh, one set of values go in and then we can copy and paste those uh, for subsequent rows if we want to do five rows or ten rows or whatever uh, we can certainly do that and so here we go we've got this guy Jim Duncan uh, he's driver tow driver will be Randy um, you know the Honda Civic anywhere one two three anywhere street off Burns Highway and the guy's engine oh I have to double uh, double apostrophe that one to put the apostrophe into the insert there we go the guy's engine just shut down there we go and so that would be one entry and we can actually copy and paste that whole row and do a multiple uh, insert um, so we'll do a few of these we'll add a couple um, and uh, there we go I sped that up for you <laughs> and uh, okay so Th those are, are our tow pickups for the moment um, and you can see we've got our our script there so I'm gonna go on to the toolbar and click execute and you can see uh, it did return uh, five rows affected now I can right click and refresh my tables listing because it doesn't automatically get refreshed and now you can see there is a table called tow underscore jobs and if I right click select top 1000 
you can see there we go boom we've got data in our database and that's what we want so this is our Azure SQL database for our tow operations application and we have data we are good to go and so now we have our database and you can keep this script if you like you can save it you can do control s um, in my case I will uh, just delete it for now I think we have our data that's fine and now uh, you can see that our server and our database and connectivity is all set up we know how to uh, create a new access into our database if we need it and uh, we can uh, go ahead and minimize that screen now that was our Azure portal and now what we can do is we can go into our application and uh, we can try connecting to our data And so in order to do that, um, what we'll do is we're going to uh, go down to our web.config that you see way down here. Um, now this holds all the configuration information for your application. So say, say you deployed this in five different sites. Uh, well, you would put your configurations for each of those different sites in this file. Um, so that, um, you know, settings and things, you could deploy it without changing your code. All you need to do is change this one little file and it will, uh, you know, change it for each of your deployments. Now we're going to add a section here uh, right after, um, <clears throat> right at the end, just before the very end of the, uh, of the file here. Uh, you can add a connection string section. Um, and you'll see that it pops up in the IntelliSense and then inside of the connection strings we'll do an add um, entry here and we'll call it toe underscore CNN which is the that'll be the name of our toe connection for our toe uh, database there <clears throat> and then we'll paste in the string that we put into a notepad earlier you'll you'll Remember that I mentioned that you needed to save this string when we created the database. You can go back and check that out if you need to. I'm going to paste in our, our connection string here. Now this is fairly secure, but there is a much more secure way of doing this, uh, which uses Key Vault, and we'll, we will take a look at that in another episode. Uh, but for today, we're going to put our connection string into the uh, configuration file and uh, that will do it for um, our configuration file. So we just needed to put in our password. Um, the, uh, the string was nicely formatted already for us to paste in there. And so now we've got this, uh, we've got our connection string in our application. We've got a very simple application that we've built and uh, the next step is going to start to look at the code now. Now you can do it by going to the view menu just like I showed you there and you can go view code or you can hit the F7 on your keyboard when you're looking at one of those form pages. Remember I said on the right hand side there, you know, about, contact, default, those are all forms. And so uh, if you want to see the uh, code for those, you hit F7, you can go in, you can see uh, events just like you see for your other you know environments um, so if you have a button button called CMD uh, you know go next then you'll have you might have a procedure in there to do a couple things for navigation or whatever and so um, here we are we're in our um, we're in our, our sheet here I'm going to remove that um, text uh, for for you know the learn more and I'll just call it refresh for now we're not going to do anything with this today uh, but I just wanted to show you that you can change these um, these buttons here and you can you know you can put in your own values um, you can you can delete them if you if you don't need them for your application so what I'm going to do with that button is I'm just going to make it point back to ourself here on default.asp 
ASPX so that you know it'll do a refresh each time you click that button. And then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to plunk on our screen here a grid view. Um, and you do that by doing the opening angle bracket um, and then grid view. You'll specify the ID that must be unique. So we'll call it grid view main, GVW main. And then you can put uh, run at equals server. That's almost on, on all of your controls. We'll have that. Um, and then you don't need to put any more. You can really customize the grid view. It's kind of like data sheet view for those of you coming from Microsoft Access. And you can have alternating, you know, back colors on each line and things like that. And you can really customize it to have buttons inside and all kinds of things. But for today, all we're going to do is load a very simple list into that grid view. It's probably just going to show up at the bottom of the page uh, because um, the CSS, that's the style sheets, might not allow me to put it into the, uh, into the uh, what you call the jumbotron at the top there. Um, but we'll go ahead and do that. So here we go. Just like in Microsoft Access, we have a page load or we have a form load event. This is very similar to what you guys are used to. Um, and uh, now you can see we can start to do some coding. So there's some things we need in order to, in order to do our data connection. And I'm going to show you those uh, right now. We're going to take a look at some of those. Um, so I've got uh, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to I'm going to get that connection string from the configuration file. Um, now remember I, that the configuration file is is handled differently than the rest of the files in the solution. It has a bit of extra kind of like security and stuff on it, and so we're going to get that by saying strcnn is equal to configuration manager connection strings, and then the name of our string, and then the connection string. And that, that'll load that variable with that, uh, with that um, value. And then the next thing we'll do is we'll, we're going to create a connection. And we'll create a connection using the SQL connection in the SQL client. So this is like the native connector for all of the Microsoft stuff, which is uh, really nice to use, especially if you're using Azure SQL. Um, so we can uh, we can get data very easily, and th and then we'll create a variable for our data set because we're going to load some data in our application. You know, um, at runtime we're going to load up some data from the database, and then we can use it. We can put it in a list, or we can do whatever. Um, and then we'll create a, a SQL string, and uh, we'll just say select star from our tow jobs. And, uh, and order by the name, I guess, you know, called in. Whoever called it in will order by that. So you might change it for your application depending on what you do. Um, this is sort of the first step. All we're doing today is all we want to do is get a connection, get the data, display it in our, in our application on the internet. So we're going to deploy the, the uh, application as well and show all of this actually working. Um, so so we'll, we'll create a data adapter next. And the data adapter allows us to do different things. And one of them is that we can fill a data table from, you know, over a with a connection and a, and, a, and a SQL string. So now what we can do is we can go, uh, you know, new SQL client, SQL data adapter. There's our SQL string and then the connection to execute it over. And then uh, we can say dpt.fill, and we'll, uh, we'll fill our data set. And then this is an optional argument. You can put in the name of the table because you're, you might have a data set. You might have like 20 different tables you load up in your application. And you don't want to make 20 different data sets. Just make 20 tables in a data set. It's much more efficient. And uh, there you go. You can fill that, and so now we've got the data from uh, from our tow jobs table in in the data set, and now we can look at a data table. So we'll we'll create a data table um, uh, variable, and we can load that data table variable with that TTMP tow jobs 
a temporary table we put in there and that's going to load it into a variable so now we can do things we've got now we've got a table and we can do things like load up our grid view that we created and the grid view is what we created on the other screen it's sort of like the data sheet and right now it's just an empty data sheet it doesn't do anything in fact it doesn't even show up when you launch the application and so what we'll do is we'll say uh, grid view main dot data source is equal to uh, the, the uh, data table that we made tbl data and then we'll say grid view main data bind and that's going to bind that table that grid view to the table um, and so now it's bound as the page is loading and we can go ahead we'll close our connection um, <clears throat> we'll we'll um, uh, we'll dispose of our objects I almost did an access uh, <laughs> set equal to nothing there for from Microsoft access uh, we'll do our tbl data dot dispose um, you know each of the objects that can be disposed will it's just nice to do the cleanup um, you can also do another programming structure which I will show you guys called using where it'll automatically do a lot of the stuff for you and also uh, we will take a look at using a try catch block uh, for uh, for our um, our stuff here but today what we want to do is I just want to show you um, how the code works in, in order here and if we get an error um, it'll tell us in the IDE here and so that's all the code we're gonna do today we're gonna we're gonna try that out and I'll go back to our source page here and of our form and I'll hit F5 or I can just click on here on the IIS Express and that's gonna launch my browser on my local machine here and uh, there we go there is our tow operations page and it looks like our table was successful and it was put at the end of the page i can explain that why that happened a bit later and uh, looks like we're ready to go so we have our local uh, coding working great let's go ahead and deploy it okay so we have an application that is good to go in our visual studio and we'll go back to our azure portal that we opened up before and uh, now we're going to switch from the sql databases which we used before and now we're going to click on the app services which is going to be uh, where our app is going to live and we can <clears throat> click on create and we get a screen just like we saw before with the with the SQL database but now we have that a resource group to tow operations in there and so we're gonna put this application into the same resource group so that it used all of the resources are are similar uh, used in the same group um, and you can watch your costs and things all together in one group as well. And so you can see that it, this will be tow-operations.azurewebsites.net. We're going to use code. And then we got to select our runtime stack. <clears throat> and that's going to be uh, ASP.NET uh, version 4.8. And uh, I'm going to keep the defaults here. And you can see it created a new pricing plan now. Now you can, uh, the application service plan that you choose, um, obviously you need one that works for you. Um, they will give you a pretty good one to start, uh, but it might cost a, a bit. So make sure you go and check out the options as you create this. And uh, so I'll just hit next. I'm going to enable public access <clears throat> and leave the default for the injection and then go to uh, next uh, for the application insights now those can be very handy uh, in this case since we're just doing a demo i will turn that off and then we have our lovely tags at the end that we used for the other stuff and we'll use the same one for this for this uh, uh, application so that we can group those together 
see them together. Um, and so this application is on a standard SKU. This would be pretty well performing. Um, you can go and change the, uh, the uh, deployment size and everything. Uh, this is a pretty good one. Um, and uh, uh, so we'll keep the defaults for that. And I'll just say create for now. And uh, uh, keep in mind if, if your application is not working or like it's not, not running um, and your database is not running because it will go to sleep, um, that it does not consume resources or cost you, uh, generally speaking. So make sure you check out your deployments. Um, get enough uh, horsepower for what you need and, uh, and that'll work for you. So I clicked finally the create button there and it took a few moments and then here we go. I've got my deployment succeeded for my tow operations um, <clears throat> application that's running inside the, the tow operations resource group. And uh, now I can click on that go to resource just like we did before, except now I'm looking at the web app for tow operations you see in the top left there. Um, instead of the database and so there's the URL I can actually just click on it <clears throat> and it has nothing in there yet so there's this default page that comes up if I click on tow operations uh, Azure websites net so you can see there's nothing really in there yet uh, we've created the application and uh, but nothing really is happening uh, so far and uh, uh, we'll Definitely add some authentication to this, um, and uh, and we'll add an identity provider. I'll just use the Microsoft one uh, for now. Um, so that's going to allow anybody with a Microsoft login, whether it's Hotmail or whatever, uh, or or Live.com, um, you'll be able to log in to this application and the application will then know who's using the application and then you'll have an opportunity to oh, if it's not somebody that should use that you can punt them out or whatever um, and also you can you can set more advanced um, um, security on the application so so we're just going to use uh, use that one we'll say add uh, and uh, we are going to require users to um, to authenticate when they use the application. So that's that uh, second line there under authentication settings. And that will get us going. At least we'll know who's going in to use the application at this point. Um, and we can add some, uh, some you know, uh, functionality later to either punt users or not allow them at all. So what we can do is now is we can go to our, our Azure our Visual Studio and we'll, we'll do that uh, build and then uh, publish and then we'll we'll go through the prompts here we're gonna choose Azure App Service because that's what we're using and you should see your login here uh, at the top right um, and it should give you access to uh, the uh, the app service that you are looking for. And so here I have our tow operations app service. I'm going to click on that tow operations and I'll click finish and that will um, get my profile ready. Um, you can also do this using, uh, there are other methods you can use the the secret um, that was generated in the application. That's another way of doing it. But for today uh, this is what we see. That's going to be our published profile. So that is now created. And when we click close, now you'll see in the top left there by the blue cloud, um, our tow operation web deploy is now available. And uh, we're going to use that to publish. And you can see it has a lot of the stuff preloaded already in here from Azure because it knows who you are. So that login uh, is, is important. Um, I'll hit publish on there and let's just let this go through the motions. Um, sometimes the first time uh, deploying your application will be slower than subsequent publications when you do updates to it and things like that. 
So you can update your application using the same, uh, the same steps as what you saw here. You'll just hit the publish button and you can see this one said successful and uh, that's great and then it automatically launched the browser here. I'm not sure if this is going to pick it up. Uh, but we'll let we'll let the browser start now you can see the address is different now we've got tow operations.azurewebsites.net so we are not running this on our local computer anymore uh, we've just deployed it and it's sort of waking up <laughs> waking up on the server there and uh, you should get a login screen like this and you'll click OK now it is important this is actually a good one. Make sure you consent on behalf of your organization. Uh, it, it only happens on the very first time that the application gets logged into. Um, that will allow everybody in that domain to use that, uh, uh, to use that application. And that message, I believe, only appears for the administrators uh, of, of a particular um, of a particular domain. So, so if it's just you know, live users or Hotmail users, you don't really have to worry about that, but um, that may appear for your corporate users if you're making something for a corporation. So there we go. We've got our <clears throat> web page came up to operation.azurewebsites.net. It's got our title that we put in there, our customization to our application. That is our URL. And at the bottom, you can see we have connected to our database and we pulled out a list. Uh, we are gonna go to town on this in the next uh, few episodes of this. We're gonna customize this entire application. We're gonna make that table work a lot better. We're gonna add some functionality for editing and updating and a whole bunch of other stuff. And that's how you can get started with Web Forms and Visual Basic for your applications. Need more resources for your project? Make sure to check out the additional links in the description.